People have told me that, that um, they were living in darkness, literally, until seeing our book. Because we saw, all we saw in our future was potential crime, you know, we, didn't, we weren't inspired by anything in particular until we saw your book and it was like shining a light on our path. Because Subway Art came in it to England like a, a bomb, it dropped here. This book has changed my life. And one day in, in like early April 1986, my friends came back like from Milton Keynes going crazy that they'd seen this book in um, WH Smith's and they were like trying to shoplift it, trying to rack it up and they couldn't get it. And it was called Subway Art and it was incredible. It was graffiti on trains. So then the next week on the Monday, we sneaked up to Milton Keynes on the train and that we were supposed to be swimming at Leighton Buzzard, but we sneaked up to Milton Keynes. I had one and we managed to like steal it. And then we had Subway Art and we were looking at it and we were all excited. And then we were stealing some more stuff and boots, but then the, the store detectives just in security grabbed us and then we got arrested and then they confiscated the Subway Art. And then our parents went like crazy and grounded us. But then I had to wait like another month to get it for my 12th birthday. And that's the same day I got beat straight. And this is my Subway Art here that I got for my 12th birthday I've kept it all that time this is the actual one like yeah but when I first saw Subway Art what I took from that was like wow you can paint something really big with spray paint quickly dope and that's that's what I wanted to do so the beauty with graffiti is that it gives you all these components and these ways of painting and it's up to you to take which bits you want it's like sam you know, like making hip-hop you sample a record you take which bit of the record you want and you flip it and make something else out of it yeah i'm working for martha cooper photographs but and but you put in other characters into the background and stuff and but making up my own pieces and it's called the subway fiction series and um, they're fictional pieces of graffiti so i'm taking you back in time like i couldn't i, I wasn't around in 1982 so the only way i can be in the south bronx in 1982 is to do these fictional subway graffiti paintings that roll through the Bronx, like, yeah. I like the way James moves between, like, high culture and low culture, and it was such a big debate in, like, fine art, whether you do something which is kind of kitsch or whether you do something which is some sort of, you know, really intellectual thing, and James doesn't give a shit about whether it's, like, a movie magazine from the 50s or it's um, Rubens, you know, and he doesn't, it's not even an issue for him, which is just really good. He's, like, moved beyond these old kind of definitions. In like 2002, I did a big painting called Horrific, like based on scenes hand to do me, using the colour schemes, like a panoramic five metre long canvas. And um, Charles Sarchi bought that one and put, hung it in his gallery as the first graffiti art since John Michelle Basque and Keith Aaron to have work paintings exhibited in Sarchi Gallery in 2004. And that is all inspired by subway art yet again. Like so, like, without this book, there's no way I'd be an artist. Like no, because yeah, because I wouldn't have had the, the drive, the subject matter, the obsession. Yeah, I just be a bit, a bit, I'm a fanatic, really. Yeah. It's been a while planning this, but at last we're going to go to New York and we're going to we're going to meet the most inventive and creative subway painter in the history of New York subway painting the legendary Black Blade, the Crazy Five. And then like this one here is a classic one we was just looking at. But now we're going to hopefully visit this somewhere like this where and and get a new photograph. Um, and discuss that with Martha as well and see how New York's changed. We'll see you in New York, yeah, on the other side. James Jessup in the house. <laughs> I'm gonna get a cab now to um, to, to Brooklyn because Brooklyn rocks the best. Boogie Fresh. Are you ready for the? RD three five seven. You know it's hot spot, right? Yeah. Jay, I am man. Rap music, aggressive assassination, guns, drugs, violence, sex. Is that all rap is about? Is about? Even Bushwick, yeah, you were here in the 80s, forget about it. They, you know, they pick the meat off your bones right now if you walk two blocks. 
It's totally predatory. They, they know who, you know, they, they, they already got crack zombies out here. You know, they kill you thinking if you had 22 cents in your pocket. They didn't care. You know, people are killing their grandmas for $3 back. You can go back and check out the New York newspaper archives. It was crazy. You know, people walk all around here, la-di-da, books, hipsters, bill is a thing. Hey, you, you couldn't be here. Uh, 20 years ago. You know, it's, it, it's great, you know, but it is what it is, you know. The old New York kept people on their toes, so that was a good thing. People were more vigilant. You know, like I used to sit on Westchester Square, the train station in the morning, watch the new whole cars come in when the rush, when the rush hour crowds were. That sun hit it, the guy's reading his paper, he's forced to look up at that shiny, what the hell is this? You know, and then they like, you can, I just sit there and listen to the people's comments. How the hell do they do that? But there's a lot of secrets people that know. Like you see a lot of our cars, the windows are on it. That's because I used to steal crazy glue as well. Right. I go in the car and super glue the windows. Yeah, I've heard that forever. Like. When, you know, somebody's always going to drop a window open, you know, for, to look because yeah, they can't yeah, see yeah, the yeah, stations yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever. I think it's best that like, perhaps you don't ever meet your idols. Yeah, and yeah. And just, that's, that's just my thing. And yeah. so, whatever thought that you have with them, that's your thought rather than the actual person once you meet them like wow that's not who I thought them to be yeah, or but if I hadn't met you I never would have learned that about super glue in the windows. What happened to graffiti is is kind of weird in a sense because started out tacky 183, junior 161, just writing their names really crudely. Mighty Wise the uptown moneymaker, downtown heartbreaker from the city we know pretty. So nice I had a name of twice, New York, New York, and if you fuck with me, you will see how much trouble I can be with my 38, my 45, my spray cans. Then it became pieces, guys like Tracy 168 got really artistic. Then what happened was after characters and backgrounds came in. It says here that the first Mickey Mouse ever painted on a train by Ale, this man right here, 1974, the year yeah, I was born. Me. and. So I was like naught and you're like just painting away doing these Mickey Mouse and years later because of this painting we end up meeting you like. It's kind of, art is kind of like forever. You know all this artwork that we have I think it's going to outlive generations. And people are going to realize that what happened in New York really was kind of cool. And guys like Blade started doing whole cars and Lee. It's now we're at a point where people are so good that it's almost like the letters are something people throw in after they've done all these amazing painting techniques and I don't get it anymore. When, when Futura did that brake car, even though it was already the 80s, that was kind of a seminal car because people started to think outside the box. People were hating on me, right? Because they were like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is that? And I was like, no, no, you don't understand. Like, even then I was like, come on, man, just give me this area. You know, give me the Pollock area. I was yeah. always trying to be like, you know, try to grab the abstract, but hey, who knew? I wasn't expecting you was going to be here today, actually. I don't think you would. So, but I've, I've, I've got. I don't think you either. Yeah. How would you oh know? wait, no, I've got a book here, like from 1983, the catalog that you were in in, the in Amsterdam. I'll just go and get that. I've got to show you this. It's like, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> I didn't know if I could get you on the future of Far East theme on the pink one. Is that the one you're into? Yeah, yeah, okay. this is the one. I, I did a copy of this painting once called After Futura and the gallerist kept it. I left the gallery and she, but there's a painting the same size. I made the same stretch frame and used spray cans, but I used oil paint here and it's called After Futura 2000. Hey, you guys but, are, uh, yeah, I, thank you. Got My man knows his shit. Okay, there's a blade hole car. There's clearly letters prominent in there, but he's got a concept, it's conceptual. This is genius, yeah. this painting is like... Yeah, it's great. I mean, I love Blade. Uh, right now, we're just coming in last stop in the Bronx on the Taurus 6 line. We had a, um, we hired our own carriage today. I said, like, I just wanted the whole, whole carriage to myself because we're going to meet Blade the Crazy Five. So, yeah, pretty excited right now. Um, yeah, it's pretty unreal actually. Hey Blade, how you doing? You alright? Right, how you doing? No I way. Just spoke to Gear on the oh, phone. Yeah. He's close by. No way, is this the um the Blade Mobile from Spray Can Art and that? This is the one from Spray Can Art. I've had to call him 40 years. No way, I can't believe it. It's right here, the one from Spray Can Art that I first saw in 1987. Seven, I was 13. Yeah, hold the keys one second. So now we're going to meet Gear, Gear is it? At That's the tunnel we used to go riding in. It's like reliving your childhood over again. Going to these train stations, I haven't been here in 25 years. He did the most pieces. I guess him and Comet really 
that was it. after I had gotten out of it. They really took over the twos and the fives. He he kept writing and until really I guess it was in the late seventies, uh, early eighties when he started buffing the trains. And then that was that was the end of anything. And that's when he started con concentrating on canvases. Oh my God. Started doing the uh, the graph back from 1972. I got chased plenty of times, but I was like very skinny and very fast in those in those days. And uh, I was very fortunate to paint 5,000 trains and never get arrested or go to jail for graffiti. It's I still can't believe this to this day that you can actually do and uh, and create things that come from within you, not because some school books or school classes or stuff taught you a way to do it, it's as you teach yourself within your own creativity of what you want to do and the way you want to do it. That's where this train was painted. <laughs> yeah. Like with WBS, this is the first Halloween car by Blade, the crazy five is right in, we just touched the train and this bloody stick out. Me and Carmen could come here like in, in the daytime, like yeah. cut out of school, come here at two in the afternoon, knock out a couple of window down trains, and you know, just to have something new and fresh running. Mm -hmm. Crazy, I can't believe I just touched the train. Oh, yeah. but not where I come from. The These are the twos and the fives. They're well, now right. putting uh, oh, yeah. those things stickers on them. I used to love, I used to sit here and just get drunk and sit in the street and just watch your whole cars go by. Right. And the six train... And then did you used to shout out or then it was No, 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 quiet, just, no. Just, it would be very quiet because yeah. you didn't want to trouble. And, uh, and there, there's Martha on the corner. Martha! All right, Martha, good morning, you're all right, yeah. Um, you know, I just found this great mural around the corner. Mm -hmm. You want to go look at it? It's yeah. totally cool. Oh. They painted the whole thing so it blends in. Looking for Hoey Avenue, one of the pictures, uh, one of our main spots to take pictures back in uh, back in the day, late 70s, early 80s. The buildings behind us, you can actually see the original uh, buildings from back in the day that have been refurbished. But they were all gutted out and burnt to the ground. I thought that it was invented in New York because of the way New York was at the time, with going bankrupt, vast empty lots unguarded yards, um, things that maybe you wouldn't find in Scandinavia, say, so it never really crossed my mind that um, graffiti would spread. I was wrong. You know, unfortunately, the poverty and I think the, the poor educational system, the lack of community services, the lack of places for kids to hang out and, and play and be educated contributed to what today is a beautiful art form. Um, but for those people that grew up in that era, it was a very difficult thing to, uh, to live through and graffiti just happened to be something very special that people did. But I mean, I couldn't imagine a lot of stuff you see in uh, subway art from uh, Martha Cooper and Henry Chalfant. You actually see whole buildings in the background where you'll see every building is just burnt out and then one building with windows in it where people actually work and bust their ass all day working. And then you come home and the building you lived in it was, is on fire and you're just chucked out into the street. You know, it just, it just was, it was a horrible way to be. I still can't believe to this day that I actually came through all of that hard type of uh, hardcore life and that I actually came out of to be a normal person. Martha bigged me up in the new subway art. Yeah. You know, like, see, Martha had the street shot. Yeah. Which to me, you know, Henry did his thing, Martha did her thing. Yeah. Right? Henry was a graffiti documentarian in that, like, paced up style of standing on the platform and yeah, yeah, that's Martha it. was a fucking photographer. You know, yeah. she worked for Nat Geo. She was already like legitimate. And she was suddenly observing like, oh shit, look at like, you know, uh, life after my work kind of and what's happening around me. And that midge car, yeah, the midge that car was car also car. a long hoe, but a little, a little further. That was my spot. It was pretty much all vacant lots at the time. It gave me a clear view of the train coming. Look at look at all of this. This was all vacant lots yeah, here. And now look nothing. at, we got like suburban housing. The midge? Yeah, it was from the other side. You can't even get a picture now because they put a big other board side. in front yeah. of it. Or <laughs> but imagine that now if they had those posters, you might not have been out again, innit? The thing I always look for, I didn't like them against the sky. Mm -hmm. I wanted a 
the background, yeah, but yeah. that one is against the sky. Yeah, yeah. I remember I wanted more. The building behind it. And see what just happened there? How one just crisscrossed? Mm -hmm. You could stand and wait for six hours, mm -hmm. and then just when the train that you wanted yeah, would one. come, the other one would. <laughs> Those little guys, they're supposed to be M&M men, but they're really mescaline and acid uh, tabs with faces on them. Oh, I don't think when I was interviewing you about that train, you told me that. It reminds me of like Edward Monk, the scream with the face. It's yeah, Henry Chaffin kind of always said that. Oh, is it? Yeah. But we didn't, we didn't tell each other when we heard that there was another train. It was sort of a little competition. Not a little. <laughs> oh, okay, it was a big competition. We just shut up and that shot. You couldn't yeah, take it from this no, side it. until later in the day. No, they would tell me that it was either on the morning side or the afternoon side. No, it never turned around. Midge did used to call me, and he would, he knew the afternoon side and the morning side. Oh, he yeah. would tell me which side he painted it on. That's looking like the pole. Look at the square now. Now we're getting. Look at this here. This is right. Yeah. Look, that's the match. Yeah, the, that. Poles, that, the, yeah, the, the poles are right now. Yeah, look, and now we're, we're standing in the middle of the street. Yeah, this month. Yeah, well, look familiar with the train going over. Because, I mean, what a great shot that would be. It would be a good shot. Yeah, I can't believe this is happening. Toot the horns! He loves that picture, right? He's like, I've got yeah. to go there one day. The ray is like here. There's yeah. Ray Street uh -huh. in one way. And where's Westchester? There's, oh, Westchester, the sign sticking out. That's great. We're getting there because it's cut, popping out the back there. Yeah, and but you've got, got the, the angles close. That, that It's okay. almost like, I don't know okay. yeah, how you've got it. And then we got the guys going down underneath. Okay. I'll do the dust on Lizzie because that's close. And then we're going to leave the South Bronx. South Bronx. <clears throat> oh my, South Bronx. South, South Bronx. <laughs> South Bronx. <laughs> it is, it is. South Bronx. <laughs> South, South Bronx. <laughs> South. <laughs> South in getting the um, background, the context, you can see how, what a challenge it was driving around looking for the perfect thing, then catching. Remember, there'd be maybe one car every 10 trains or less. Sometimes one day you could go out and never get any. There it is. It's the only building. It's the only tall enough building to right? be this, above this, it like that. This, right? Dr. Feedy? Martha took this photograph. Yeah, this yeah, photo yeah. like three years ago. Uh -huh. And it actually wasn't from the top, but it was. It looked like over here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it is it. over it here. Is. It was yeah. one block block over. Yeah, so, so we, we wanted that we came back to see what it looks like now. Where you from? London. I like the way you said London. Yeah. <laughs> you go all the way up. Do you want to go up? Four years and seven months I've had some, this copy of the book and it's here now. And this is the fight that was taken right over here with the trains going around the bend now. But how did you know that he'd done this? Was that a surprise or was that one a of surprise. the surprise? And he'd done a marriage. I, I mean, mean that's unusual to get a lot of things, especially it's today. Completely unusual. I had no idea that was coming. Can't move from here, blades around the corner, there's blade. What more do you want? As good as it gets. Woohoo! Look, there's a fan going by with a jail on it. It's a van with a J.A. So Peter Doig was my tutor when I was at the Royal College, so he was a bit of an influence on me, but, but how I was influenced by Peter Doig as well is I saw how he'd like get photographs that he liked, say like a snowboarder, or something, and then do a painting from that, of like the snowboarder, and then from photographs that he liked, kind of atmospheric photographs, like black and white photographs and things like that. And then Chris Afidi as well was like sort of working from things that he liked, like hip hop and and sort of he was my tutor for it when I was at Royal College as well. And then I realised from them I could sort of bring more fun stuff into my paintings that I was really into. To start with I wasn't even going to do, I didn't know how it affected me. But basically after seeing the street and everything it just really caught me. Like I'm doing the painting with the clean train on it. Interpreting this photograph about, and it's about my obsession with where the graffiti used to be, but with my obsession to complement it, then I felt now it gave me license at last to break in to actually doing a huge copy of a Martha Cooper photograph. I love this image with the midge and the rainbow, and I think it's a very powerful image from 1983 and how new it was at the time. But I just think it's an amazing thing to like start to make paintings and they're from a photographer's photographs who you really admire, and then you end up meeting them, and then you go to look at the spot, and. 
you know, what a journey. I think it's like the journey that's important and going for all that and what I can bring into painting in the future. So, it's just been an amazing, it's been incredible. I feel like change and that has changed my life forever. And, and, and my painting, how I paint will always be different from going through this experience. One thing's for sure, as long as I can lift up a blood, as long as I don't go blind, I might even paint if I go blind, and even if I had my both arms and legs cut off, I'll probably paint my mouth, but if look, it'll be like, I'll still be painting like that, and I'm blind. <laughs> it'll be like this, look. Or like my feel, and then I'll be like, oh, a little brighter and a little darker. So, unless you kill me, I'm gonna keep painting the end. When I saw Sub Work, that just like knocked me over. I've never even recovered from it. Look at the state of me. Look at that. I'm wearing a gold, a bomb. Yeah, that's on the bomb chase. Rear from still chasing the bomb. That's what's going to go off my as I've cocktail. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> the end is that I'm going to have a fight with Mitch. <laughs> no, I'm not. Mitch is probably going to shoot me, and then that's how I die. I hopefully Mitch will shoot me for plagiarising his artwork. I can't just let loose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see why the crazy fight. I don't, I don't need attention. No, I don't need attention. I don't need, I don't need attention. <laughs> don't give me any attention. I'm not an attention seeker. <laughs> Right car, blue break.